and here we go. This is Flash at in a perfect world, and I'm flying Vinny list so far this evening on uh, Tuesday, the 9th of April, 2019, by the atomic clock on the computer before me. Ha. Anyway, uh, say hey to Grimner. Thanks for all the hard work, and especially to Miss Kate. She's always <laughs> got something to say about these crazy programs I do. And we're going to say hi to the people in the chat. Bots and bodies are as followed. And I think they got documents to prove their self. We've got Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Brackets DC, Anti Asmo, Chalcedony, I underscore B underscore D underscore C, <laughs> Java Doctor underscore 2. <laughs> J. Dread, Meister Brow, Ponder Gander, Rain, Rob Works, Romes, Vanna Wyatt, Weather Dork, Z Beth Z, Phantom, and Will Then, and Circle, Hello Honey, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Me, Frumpy, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kozu, Carl underscore Marks. He's a lot of fun. <laughs> Kiss, mm, mm, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Salamo. And there's the bots and bodies for your writing entertainment this evening on 20... Oh, whoops. <laughs> In a perfect world. I, I, do, I do that solo on purpose. This is just kind of hit and miss. But boy, do I have a great story for you guys to start off tonight. Because, as you all know, in a perfect world, well, the Jews would just run everything and take what they like and do as they please. And the rest of us would just have to say, thank you. <laughs> so we have this clown in Washington that's really got my people's back. I'm telling you, he's got his nose so far up Netanyahu's ass that I think he's been licking his balls, too. Uh, anyway, this story tonight on In a Perfect World, Trump's deal of the century to hand Palestine to Israel along with whole set of new problems. Well, kind of a shitty title way to have worded it, but this is by Mikko Pellid. From Mint Press News, <laughs> April 7th, 2019. Though the deal of the century will try to eliminate the Palestinian issues for good, what the architects of the deal, in their arrogance, failed to see, is that this so-called deal is nothing more than an irresponsible, impractical, and precarious plan that will fall just as soon as as it is raised. Okay, now raised used to mean level too once upon a time. So these words kind of get confusing. Anyway, as Benjamin Netanyahu returns from Washington to Jerusalem, determined to keep his seat as Israel's prime minister, it is clear that the final status issues, those pesky issues between Israel and Palestinians that Israel never wants to discuss are being eliminated one by one in a regional scheme that is titled Deal of the Century. This so-called deal will be the final undoing of Palestinian hopes for justice, self-determination, and return. Hmm. Yeah, that return part, that return, not... not something different it's return well here we go from the reckless declaration by president donald trump that the united states recognizes jerusalem as the capital city of israel to his more recent proclamation that the united states recognized israeli sovereignty over the syrian Golan Heights. It is becoming clear what the deal of the century will entail, disregard of the Palestinians, and recognition of Israeli rights to all of Palestine and places east. 
maybe northeast. Is that northeast? It's probably northeast. Must have been a Tuesday. The purpose of the de declaration recognizing Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights at this particular moment is twofold. It is an enormous contribution to Netanyahu's campaign for reselection on April 9th. Uh oh, that's today. <clears throat> A clear signal that Trump favors Netanyahu. And what is even more troubling, it is a precursor to what we may soon see happen with Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank. Wow. Don't these people just, man, they're just so full of fun and surprises and excitement. Never a dull moment with governments. <coughs> okay, this is called Four Elements. Four elements are likely to dominate the deal of the century. Palestinian self-determination, refugees, Jerusalem, and the future of what was formerly known as the West Bank and has been named by Israel, Judea, and Samaria. We have already been given a preview of what is to come with the first three. <laughs> Jerusalem with the Trump Declaration of December 6, 2017, recognizing the city as the capital of Israel. <laughs> Recognition of Palestinian right to self-determination was de facto reversed when in September 2018 on the 25th anniversary of the Oslo Accords, the Trump administration closed down the PLO mission in Washington. The refugee issue received an almost fatal blow when in August of 2018, the State Department announced that it will no longer provide funds for UNRWA, the United Nations Agency created to take care of Palestinian refugees. Even more than financial significance, the $350 million cut to the UNRWA budget was a blow to the very existence of a refugee issue. Trump serving Nutty Yaya's agenda is attempting to eliminate the refugee issue altogether by questioning the right of the Palestinians to aid and by questioning the right of the descendants of the 48, 1948 refugees to refugee status. This is just, okay. Some religion nutters out there, they're probably sitting there with their jug of mayonnaise and a nice clean towel because this is some sick shit. But I'm one of those rare people that I don't like governments. I don't like what governments do. I don't like what they tell us they do, and then they go do something else. That kind of shit. Okay, back to this epic tale of political intrigue and mystery. <clears throat> the refugees must cease to exist. Wow. The deal of the century is likely to include an attempt to eliminate the Palestinian refugee issue. In a statement he made in Hebrew to the Israeli cabinet in July 2018, Yahu called the Palestinian refugee issue fictitious. He claimed that the sole purpose of UNRWA was to keep the Palestinian refugee issue alive forever and thus to threaten the state of Israel by perpetuating the notion of a right of return. Trump, for his part, is currently claiming that only the people who actually lived in mandatory Palestine before the 1948 ethnic cleansing, people who are now 70 years old or older, can be considered refugees. <laughs> Their descendants cannot. Wow, this is getting good. Yeah, are you guys taking notes? Preparing for your future for when the Jews come and kick you off the place you're at. 
All right, back to this crappy story. Uh, Nutty Yaya's problem is that when you ask Palestinians in the diaspora where they are from, they say Yaffa, Hafa, (laughs) I don't know, Rommel, and so on. I would suppose these are Palestinian cities that I don't visit, (laughs) so I don't know what they're called. Now, when you ask Israelis where they are from, they say Poland, Russia, Morocco, Yemen, and so on. Well... (laughs) When you ask Jews around the world, they say the same as the same thing Israelis do. So while the grandchildren of the 1948 refugees can tell you the name of the town or village from which their family came, even though the village has been destroyed, no Israelis or Jewish people for that matter can trace their roots back to the ancient kingdom of Judea. How do you say that? Judea? Judea? It's one of those Jewy, gooey things. And I should I should know my Jewy, gooey names. I just don't, don't pay enough attention to the critical things in the world that will form my perfect brain so I could become <laughs> a member of society <laughs> in good standing with a card to show everybody so I can prove it. (laughs) That's how you know you're free. You have your card to show everybody you're free. (laughs) This is my free card. (laughs) Anyway, back to the story. It is important to note and remind both Trump and Netanyahu that According to international law, well, they don't abide by that. Even refugees who were not born in Palestine but in the diaspora are refugees. Diaspora, what a weird word. I don't think I ever even heard that there word. Must be Latin. Must mean that place over yonder in Latin. And have a right to return. It must be like they they got some kind of birthright. It must be a birthright word. This is because under international human rights law, please, neither local integration nor resettlement forecloses the possibility of refugee return to their country of origin. (laughs) Sounds like they're selling cars. (laughs) Were you made in America or were you made in Palestine? I don't know. My folks were on an airplane. They started that Mile High Club. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was joking about that part. Furthermore, after after a large-scale displacement, such as the one that took place in Palestine in 1948, restitution may cover both public and private property. Wow, this is... Not only people... It is not only the return of the people, but it is also the rightful claim to rest. Ah, they had to fuck it up with money. With restitution, because that's how they'll let, interpret this in the long run and ruin everything. Which will surely be to be made that Israel dreads. Okay, well, the guy is writing. He's not writing in English in English. He's writing some other language in English in Every once in a while, I catch a on. Hey, Cirque would say that. <laughs> the extent of abandoned property that Israel has taken it over as a result of the 1948 ethnic cleansing of Palestine is enormous. Ethnic cleansing. No, that's a bunch of shit. This is a fucking land grab. It wouldn't have mattered who was on that land. These fuckers were going to take it. They're going to take it, and we're just wasting our time reading stories about how there's a you know, one in a gazillion chance this won't happen. <laughs> nah. Coming to a town near you, the extent of abandoned property that Israel has taken over as a result of the 1948 Ethnic cleansing of Palestine is enormous. Palestinians were expelled from entire cities, including the ones I read that I read wrong earlier, (laughs) and all of West Jerusalem. Ah, I could read that one. It's got Salem in it. In addition to that, 
Hold on. Let me get a sip. I'm getting coffee. Wow. I deserve that one. That, that last word was whew, wow. In addition to that, there are vast tracts of agricultural land that were taken. After the population was expelled, profit-making orchards of citrus, olive, and other agricultural products were handed over by the newly established state to Jewish agricultural settlements. Yeah, this is going to end. <laughs> Netanyahu and the entire Zionist establishment are aware of all this and they fear the day when they will be held accountable for this theft of property. Yeah, well, Nutty Yaya didn't start it, but he's just, he's just the idiot. He's like Trump. He's just the poor idiot that's sitting in that seat that everybody blames for all the shit, the people that pay him to take shit for what they do. That's his job, and he's going to do it. Now, where was I here? Boy, Judea and Samaria is next. Is next. Our next is next. Yeah, well, that's debatable, I suppose. I'm not a grammar Nazi or anything. Israeli annexation of the West Bank used to be a far-fetched idea. That is no longer the case. Trump, Trump, Trump. The West Bank is now, and has been for many years, Judea and Samaria. It has cities and counties. It includes industry and a bureaucracy with its own police force. Ooh. There is a highway system in place and shopping centers, all built exclusively for Jews. Official annexation of the area to Israel today, much like recognizing Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel. And Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights well, would be merely a formality, albeit one that contravenes, contravenes international law. Man, this guy contravenes. What the? Must be trying to become a lawyer. He uses all these weird, obscure words that I don't use like once every five years. Or maybe never. <laughs> I'm not well read in the Jewish garbage stuff here that I'm doing tonight on In a Perfect World. So, back to my epic tale of mystery and intrigue. <clears throat> it is realistic to expect that, as part of the deal of the century, the U.S. will be for long recognize Israeli sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. This will mean officially creating one state over all of Palestine with exclusive rights for the minority Israeli Jews. While this may seem like a win for Israel, it will always it will also give rise to serious problems for the Zionist state. Israel controls the lives of two million Palestinians who hold Israeli citizenship. Oh, yeah, that is going to be a plot problem. 2.2 <laughs> million Palestinians locked up in the Gaza Strip and about 3 million Palestinians in what used to be the West Bank. That is a total of 7 million Palestinians living without rights in a state or about. Six million Israeli Jews have exclusive rights. Hey, that's kind of like living in America. You know, where the guy with the gun, he's got all the rights, and you, you do what he says, or he'll shoot you. <laughs> and they come in two flavors, too. They've got the crook, and for your dining and movie experience, they have the cop. <laughs> yeah, he'll pull you over for that broken tail light, and, you know, give you a ticket for, oh, I smell pot on your breath. Hmm. You been smoking, sir? <laughs> well, we don't really have a way to judge if you're high on pot, but just in case, I'm going to charge you with it. <laughs> oh, man, what a world we're in. That was a comedy moment 
from me for no particular reason. Okay, let's hope I didn't read this already. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Today, perhaps more than ever, U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East is being dictated by Israel, and specifically by Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> it is executed by Jared Kushner through his father-in-law, the President of the United States. Through the deal of the century, we'll try to eliminate the Palestinian issue for good. What the architects of the deal and their ignorance fail to see <laughs> is that this so-called deal is nothing more than an irresponsible, impractical, and precarious plan that will fall just as soon as it is raised. Uh, There's that raised fall. Mm -hmm. And then it goes, I, I can post that, but it, it wasn't like... I don't know. I don't see a, too many folks in the reallibertymedia.com chat that are all jumping at and fetching for the Jews or they want dual citizenship, you know, so they can go visit their nosy relatives. <laughs> you know, snippets and nosy people in Jerusalem. Wow. What are we going to do? And I, I was saying years ago that Whatever the hell is going on out in Palestine, that's just practice for what's coming. And I think I had it backwards because there's nothing for the government in America that's left. There's nothing left to take. It's all gone already. They got all the land. They got all the control over what we eat and drink and devour as a collective, what we buy and what we can't buy. Everything is regulated for your safety and your security. You've been safety and secured right up to your eyeballs. And if you're not feeling the squeeze or by now and starting to wonder what the fuck is going on here, we're being told one thing, but hmm, why there seems to be something quite different going on in the reality of the situation. How can we identify and then there's that that small fraction of mental handicaps that actually believe that the politicians holding seats of decision today are doing this for anything beside greed, selfishness. Maybe they got a debt to their family name. They got to do this crap. Who knows what they want to do, but by the results of what they do, this game is... I don't want to play it. I say that all the time on the radio, but how do I pull it off in real life? Hmm. It is a mystery of life. How do we do that? I think what happened is more like the the system just doesn't pick individuals. I mean, unless you're worth a lot of money or you're sticking your nose in somebody else's soup and causing a big disturbance on the internet maybe i guess the internet might bring it there's been a couple of uh, internet people that got world famous i would say like that remember the dumbass that wanted to march on washington with loaded weapons <laughs> a million men march right into dc and we'll show them all that we ain't afraid but we can't cross that bridge because cross that bridge, those people, they don't allow guns. <laughs> so, what was all that about? I don't know. Maybe it was just to stir up more people so that they could sell them more guns. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to go back to the chat. I see my name. Some uh, Salamo says that's not that far up there flash so perhaps if he was licking his ear that would be far <laughs> yeah well yeah okay but he's i don't know trump is just too jewish for me and the way he talks and waves his hands around and acts like an old queen i i got my doubts this and besides like they were saying you got 6 million Jews, you got 7 million Palestinians, and the Jews are going to try to snap that freaking whip again. Hmm. Now, I don't think too many people are aware of this. I'm going to tell you a little secret. The only country 
on the planet that supports Israel in the open and says, hey, good job, Israel, is America. Everybody else is just, no, that's not such a nice thing to be doing. You should give the land. No, go away, Jew. Oh, bye-bye. But where are they going to go? And I think I came up with a really good idea. What I stole it from George Carlin, kind of, right? Nobody likes Oklahoma anymore. Why don't you just trade Oklahoma to Israel for Israel, and they can move all the Jews and then keep them all in Oklahoma? Just build a wall around it. <laughs> Let them do their banking until their freaking hair falls out, but in the confines of Oklahoma only, and leave the rest of us alone. No, that that would never. Work. That's like doubling down on the twenty-one trillion dollar national debt to unfuck the world. I guarantee it would work. What we do, you just go hemp, just create every machine and every product necessary to have a hemp world, and there you go. <laughs> well, and by the time you get done smoking that first pipe load. The $21 trillion in debt won't ma Nah, nobody will care anymore. Even the people that think it's theirs, they'll be, ah, it's cool. Let's just smoke. You got any cookies? <laughs> the world would be so different if the legal beagles and all their helpful laws and their medical opinions would just shut the fuck up. Hmm. Now, there's a few folk in the world I have encountered on the interwebs that say the same damn thing about me. <laughs> I should shut the fuck up because I don't agree with the official opinions. And I'll give you another example of why I even post this. I think I still have it on my information thing here. Where is it? No, it was behind the deal of the century. It's probably in my history. I will open a new window Ah, see, I'm learning. And then I will see when, because I listened to it to earlier today. Now, I have told my uh, story, so to speak, about blood pressure medicine time and time again over the years. It's probably a boring old story, so I'm not going to tell the story again. What I'm going to tell you is now there's medical people, doctors and such, that are taking their ass in their hands and they're putting this shit on the uh, on the internet for everybody to see it. So I'm going to go to my history. Yeah, I didn't bookmark it, though. Should be here. Wait a minute. They changed the format. Anyway, I'll find the link eventually. But I did write down the doctor's name. So give me a second to stall you for that. Dr. John Bergman. So I'm just going to go fresh into YouTube. Just type his name in, Dr. Jan Bergman. And this is an important link to me because it has a doctor explaining in detail why the blood pressure game is uh, it's a game. And what they do is, when you think it through, it doesn't make any sense. But here we go. I'll put up into the reallibertymedia.com chat. If I don't start it and ruin everything, let's see. Nope. Uh, pause. 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 Uh, nope. I started it again. Wait a minute. Okay. Now I got it. Now I'm going to copy the damn thing. Look at me. I'm like a grown up here on the RLM now. I remember when I couldn't do this stuff with, without ruining something or for fear of blowing up the internet. But anyhow, here we go. It's even called the truth about blood pressure and cholesterol and the reason that I'm so in just excited to see another uh, doctor step forward and explain this stuff in detail in simple language and if you've got you know problems that take you to a doctor like I did then you'll be familiar with the format and the way that they talk to you and the things that they don't explain that if they did explain you would realize there's no such thing as having high blood pressure it's a it's another um, Rockefeller game banker game just like just like everything else I, I can't think of anything that we live with today that hasn't been mishandled by these fucking thieves 
They're so in love with money and power that they'll do and say anything to say or to say to sell the shittiest crap there is for the most available profit. And I know we should blame it all on Israel and the Jews for their horrible banking purposes, practices, and all that. But I don't know. There's got to be more to it than ah, those fucking Jews and their interest. And there's got to be some other answer to it. Now, because I'm not a big fan of economics in the first place, um, when we have a system that's based on fiat currency and people are trading and dealing and wheeling and I did it, I traded and wheeled and dealed and did it, but the stuff in the background, the, the banking um, interest rates to the Federal Reserve Bank for their paper that we're not even using, really, when you think about it. They're charging you for all of it. And how much, how much currency do you handle in a month? Really, think about it. And then if you put all of these millions of people together, hundreds of millions of people, do you think that they spend as much as the bankers trade electronically? I don't. I don't think so. So if that's two separate worlds and two separate accounting systems, then... What are we doing? And why? Yeah, and this stuff goes over really big, too. I don't get it. Oh, I'm going to buy stock in this. Uh, what's this newest craze? Me and Ant, uh, not Anti, me and, uh, and well, then we're getting into a little, I don't know, the disagreement of kind. Because uh, he's all excited about the electrical cars coming and the future looks so good. Hey, Vince. Uh, and I don't. I, I see that. A car used to be affordable once upon a time, and you didn't have to go out and get insurance and sign it over to the, st well, no, you had to sign it over to the state to register it, so, no, you always had to sign the damn thing over, but even 40 years ago, a car, you didn't, you didn't have to go into debt for, the, you know, 40, 50 grand to get a new car. It was a lot less money in those days, and they were bigger cars. <laughs> they had room, you could... I grew up in the back seat of a car without a safety belt. Uh, I don't think we ever had uh, what do you those buckets they strap these poor kids into the back seat in. Uh, Child, what do you call those things? Safety somethings or another. I don't know. They're as safe as me. But here we are. And any anyhow, they're gonna get you. You're gonna pay less using fuel, but you're gonna be paying a lot more on a car payment and your insurance and the taxes <laughs> and the fines for not using oil anymore they're going to lose revenue they're going to make up for it somewhere hey Vinny so they're going to uh, probably tax the shit out of you for it so in the long run the only thing that gets well, cured is the ego oh look at how clean I'm running on electric no, it's still the same shit. You're running on the same crap we've already always ran on. You just have to go talk to somebody like Larry Woods to understand what exactly does that mean. Because average Joe doesn't get it. Oh, well, I get my gas. It's all certified and the government says it's good for me. Hell, I could put it in my coffee and drink it. It's wonderful. No, it's not. But there's other ways to fuel a car they always get kind of overlooked laughed at ridiculed oh you can't do that yeah because we're all sucked into this filthy fucking oil they even made a damn uh, cartoon about that my kid uh, when I was uh, I guess in the 90s I was raising my daughter Erica and she fell in love with this movie called Fern Gully. And, of course, cartoons was about as far as she could get at that age. She was about two and a half. And she loved Fern Gully. And it was all about the rainforest and the evil that men do to get the oil. <laughs> well, the wood in the, in the forest. But using an oil-driven machine and just all the little things in reality in a cartoon to entertain kids. 
Now, I don't really think it it's going to change any, you know, one group or one person ain't going to change shit. But you can change it for you. And that's what I did. Now, so far, so good. I haven't broken down. And uh, the last time I was in a car, it was a result of helping my neighbor out. And, you know, doing my half of the job that he asked me to help him with. Or I would have not been in the car with him at all. Uh, and that was back the first year we was here. 2014. So I'm, I'm coming up on, uh, what, somewhere around four and a half years without riding in a vehicle that's the longest i've ever gone in my whole life i think my, the first thing i did was ride in the car with my mom and dad from the hospital as soon as they could get me out we're on the way to paradise and <laughs> and i rode around in a lot of cars after that but luckily for me when i make up my mind to give something up whatever it may be i give it up and I'll replace it with something else. Like I replaced my addiction for driving around with my addiction for walking. Oh, uh, he's what Vinny is hillbilly engineering cobbling different types pipings. Oh, Vinny, I don't know. You sometimes. Oh, no, you probably typoed. You went to the hardware store early. I remember you splitting for that. Anyway, you want to come on tonight and give me shit about um, the color of my hair or what? Because I've pretty much, I started out doing um, <laughs> doing a Jew-Israel America Trump fucking link. And then I got off on the blood pressure medicine thing. And um, see, the thing is, is the person looking on has got to understand all the dynamics of what the doctor is talking about or in the long run you just be like uh like a voter and go well, i'm not interested in that thank you i'm a registered in this party so go away and to find out the truth about how we're treated with the medicine that you know the state approves so that we'll be ill is it's a hard one it's very difficult to uh Deal with the fact that you got screwed over like that by people that said they were there for you when they weren't there for you at all, ever. And I'm pretty sure having the dunk semen in the inoculation packaging <laughs> might be an indication of some shit going on. You never know. Hey, Vinny, I'm going to open, okay, I'll open up my wire and wait on Vincenzo to join me on here on In a Perfect World. I thought he was off uh, shopping and such. I seen him leave for some hardware store or something a while ago. And, uh, but I, you know, I can't not invite Vinny to. This is half his show for crying out loud. <laughs> he just doesn't want it. It's, Vinny is being a radio, uh, an un what do you call that? He's running out on his radio family. <laughs> no, he's not. Hold on a minute. Let me see what's going on here. Oh, I got it. I got to click that other thing. Hold on one second. Uh, voice meter. There we go. That you? No, I got to go back to the other one, too. Oh, uh, boop, boop, boop. Heads. There you go. You there? No, it says I missed him. I'll call him. I think I sorted it out. Hmm. But I'm pretty sure we got... Uh, yeah, I I got that part. Uh, we'll give Vincenzo a ringy-dingy right now. Anyway, so yeah. The, it, the truth about any of this stuff that we're living with is at the very best harsh... <laughs> Uh, hey, Vincenzo. Hola, como esta? Um, I'm here. I was. Did you catch the beginning of the show, or did you just get in? I just got in. I, yeah, I got back nine minutes ago. Yeah, well, I did this link on uh, the great work Trump is doing with Israel. <laughs> and, what a wonderful uh, man. Oh, he's so kind. 
Yeah, and, and it just happens today is uh, Nutty Yahoo's reselection day to hold the prime minister job again, I suppose. Because, you know, something about whoever's in the seat of power has something to do with the decisions they make. It's a real good story. It helps when you got <laughs> Grimner. Danger, danger. Uh, flash is pushing buttons. Yeah, that's huh. what I do. But, yeah, okay. so then... I, I really hope you take a look. I posted in in the RLM chat. It's called The Truth About Blood Pressure and Cholesterol. I heard a little bit about yeah. that. You know, my mom died from, uh, well, uh, she went in for stents, and then um, all of a sudden she needed a quadruple bypass, and then, uh, you know, it wasn't sewed up good and didn't, uh, didn't get enough oxygen to the brain and stuff. So there she died. And really all she had to do was put, eating a bunch of bacon and eggs so heavily and uh, go for like a vegetarian diet for a while and clean the, all that cholesterol out. You need cholesterol. There's good cholesterol. And right. cholesterol. Right. Pile it up. And it, anything derived from uh, from vegetable is uh, so much more cleaner. Uh, you know, it's like you was talking about oil a while ago. Oil's dead stuff. You can get, like from hemp, you can get energy from live stuff. And there's a big difference. And the same in the consumption of our food that we you know, consume. Well, it's the same destructive principle behind burning fuel. It's not a progressive thing. It's a destruction. It's a progress of a destruction. You're right. destroying something to make something else that's not good. <clears throat> exactly. I mean, that's my way to explain that little detail of it, you know, because... People have, we've been raised to explain the things that we don't see, right? Like, you don't see how an engine runs. You see the results of your car rolling down the road, right? Right. So your your average person like myself that doesn't get into the, how the the engine actually operates, what makes that fuel burn to make that piston do what the piston does to turn this to spin that and on and on and on but what i do know know about it is all the processes about it are all based in dirt and garbage there yeah you, well, if you can still use uh, combustion if you were using a cleaner fuel which was derived from a plant base and then like we've talked before you know um, the efficiency is just so muted in what's, uh, you know, running through the carburetor of most cars where uh, even the fuel source. So uh, increasing your mileage and the efficiency of the machine, which is, you know, everything's built on planned obsolescence. And <laughs> yeah. <down> just <laughs> some more. like my problem with Walmart, it, you know, uh, <laughs> just break down. It's the way of the world today. The big lighter society, la, la, la. Right. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Well, you either adapt to that mentality or you fight it. But if you fight it, you're not going to ever... Yeah. You, you you can't acquire well-made products out of good materials because at the level of finance that we exist in, these things aren't available to us. Yeah. There's... Uh... There's a lot of alter alternatives that some people pick up, and uh, but it's a kind of a build it as you go machine that uh, usually people cobble together. Which good old hillbilly engineering, thank God for that. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, oddly I, enough, you say that. Box. Yeah, I just come from the hardware store, and I gotta cobble these different types. I probably should have asked Beal a little advice first, but uh, uh, yeah, there's different type of piping. I, I forget what it's called, but. Um, this so I'm going to try to convert into uh, uh, the PVC, the hot water PVC, and then I'm going to run some hoses off of that and so I'm going to hook everything up and tie in and uh, split it and uh, all that uh, kind of so stuff. So you're There's different types of pipes. So I got clamps. Yeah, clamps. Of, a clamp, two dollars for one clamp. Wow. Hose clamp. How big? Not even big enough, probably. <laughs> I mean, wow. Okay. <laughs> Not big enough is not an indication of success. I hope yeah, I, my wife doesn't say that. I expect a. <laughs> I was being. I made a wiener joke on yeah, a perfect I, world. <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. no, at least I hit a topic, though, that uh, Vinny knows a lot about particular things. He's not like, you're not like Hansel where you're an expert on everything, Vince, but the shit I've, you know, uh, you know. I know a little bit about everything. But, but the, the, the few the things that you're... I yep. would. That's why I went with the blood pressure and the cholesterol, because you know I've talked to you about it with Mary. Yeah. Well, because there's, you know, there's always people that might not be familiar with what we do on the radio, might be hearing this for the first time. Go, wait, what are these crazy, crazy, crazy people talking about? You know, because yeah. yeah, the if you read newspapers, watch television. The advertisement and the information is all designed to make you want to be ill and go to get treatment so you can feel better. I've been wondering what that little tingling was at the end of night. Finger right there. And I think there's probably a pill for that. So I just wish you'd have a commercial for it. I know. <laughs> a pill for that. Uh-oh. Grimner's putting up. No. What is that it? Yeah, let me open this and see what's so funny. Everybody's laughing. I want to laugh, too. Give me a little Jason Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Got me. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Oh, hey, what? I got something. What? Matter of fact, so, <clears throat> I'm working here in the background. You know, I've been playing. Uh, I started my What Matters Worldwide uh, series. I started in radio with. So I got episode two out and three coming. But... Uh, uh, so I'm going by Vinny Cuss this uh, this week, but that's a longer story, and I'll, I'll bring that to bear. Let me find this here. We got a Samuel L. Jackson, and it's part of my uh, cobbled together writings here. So, uh, well, you could the, call Vinny Cuss could be like Roman, like you know. Yeah, that's, that's what it. Yeah, Articus is where it's a uh, intended from. Funny that uh, Gary L. has a dog named Articus, and uh, so I've seen that. But I added the extra. Ass. It was kind of a. It was. A, it was a, a play a, on words for cuss, no, right? It was actually, a Freudian. Yeah. It was a Freudian, Freud, a Freudian flip of the uh, of the peck of the typewriter. There, where I added that extra <laughs> F. Then I go it's perfect because it it all builds in together. But the C word, uh, Vinny Cuss is uh, part of it. I'm almost sure where I'm at. Vinny Cuss. Such a long one. Yeah, best of intentions is. It, it falls. And before that, I've got a Rupert Kipling quote. War is an ill thing, as surely, as I surely know, he says. But it uh, could be an ill world for weaponless dreamers if ill men were not now and then slain. Ooh, with, the, uh, with the best of intentions, this, uh, this is from, uh, of course, Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. Everybody will recognize I'm sure. It says, the path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness. For he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brother." And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon me. Ah. Well, yeah, very right. interesting. Yeah. A lot of people take that whole thing maybe as a whole quote out of the Bible, but uh, mm. that's uh, that's Quentin Tarantino's writing and an adaptation to uh, Ezekiel twenty five seventeen from the King James Version, which says, "I will execute great vengeance upon them." Mm. Ver- a furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance. Upon them. The C word that's Vinicus. Oh, yeah, yeah. So practical versus practical. Yeah, you know, there's a difference in the, a practical distinction and uh, the practicable. <laughs> so, practicable. Yes. Practicable. It's practical. It's, it means it's effective uses. Oh, use, you're use. making more words up, or is this just That's another practical. one I missed? No, these are real words. That's practical. Mm. Now, practicable mm. is complete. in a way. It's useful or easy to use. Practice means something, uh, or practical means that's uh, something that is or could be done. Practicable. 
Yeah, we could do that. Well, you gave me a great title for the show tonight. Thank you. Good. Good. Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's called tonight, Give It All Away! Exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> Grim says, preach it, Brother Vinny. <laughs> yeah, was, that, was that a fair Samuel L. Jackson? No. No, you sound like Vinny. Good. You're not really good with imitations if you want my opinion. If you don't want my opinion, say stop and I'll stop. Well, the way I look at it is it's not me impersonating the person. It would be the person impersonating me impersonating them. Now it makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, everything makes perfect sense when you're crazy. <laughs> and well, then, says uh, Robert Duvall in the uh, Apostle. Uh, you know, it helps if you're tone deaf. What? Yeah, everything is, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, well, I must not be then because I'm very sensitive to certain sound. Because you have long hair. You have extra receptacles. Yeah, well, that's what they say, but I, I haven't had short hair since the 90s. So, hmm. I don't really remember. I haven't had long hair since when? The 90s. <laughs> See, I, I always I always do what everybody does. Whatever the rest of the world is doing, I'm going to do that. That's what I do. Did you know that? No, I didn't, but so I really... Why I'm telling you, because, hey, I I thought it was pretty clever of me to do it so well. Uh, what was the other? Oh, wait, the other one. The truth about... Okay, I'm doing my notes now while we're sitting here winkling around doing nothing in particular. I, I'll have to come back to my neck of Vinicus, but I'm going to have to do it to the Well, uh, I was really interested in uh, the the rituals, you know, and, and the brainwashing behind the blood pressure and cholesterol crap that the people pulled on us over the years through TV and school and whatnot. I thought, damn, they got the big balls. They got balls of steel. If you want to know the truth. Huh? Huh? <laughs> big ones. Cute. Huge. You don't think Almost. so? Let me ask you. Could you treat people the way the government treats you, could you treat us that way with a clear conscience? I'm listening to an awesome audio book right now yeah. to answer that question. Uh-oh. <laughs> called, um, it's called uh, uh, Day Zero from uh, Mark Cameron. And inside the book, this uh, the government has been, we've got a new, like, uh, internal uh, audit of uh, you know public officials, and it's actually like you know Stasi in and, and, and the uh, um, the nature of itself. Uh, anyway, so you know all this coups going on, and U.S. government and world political turmoil coming about, and uh, you know the America being subjected to the terrorism like in other parts of the world. <laughs> <That's stupid. laughs> what a bunch of crap! Your fucking government's terrorizing you. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. But this is how, how, you know, the main mind of America is presented through media uh, to, to the masses, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, a lot of people don't understand it. We're already there. Oh, you know? yeah. How we'll be on this it. Last week, this, uh, this governance, it's, people are complaining about government, and it's, it's these people, these extra... Uh, 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 or uh, gov non-governmental -gov organizations and and the the these agencies also that people are supposed to be government, which are um, well, there's so many words to call it. Descriptive, what I want to call it, but yeah, extra governmental agencies that uh, controlling yeah. Yeah. governance and not government because government, uh, you know, you, you want to personify the the word person and uh people and and this and then government you know government and people too and this this kind of garbage but it is a beast in a sense well, and people can, can control it and guide it 
outside. The illusion is it's the government that's doing this, but it's the uh, the actions of others that's controlling it. Wow. I see, I don't see any actions being taken. I just hear words on headphones. <laughs> I read things on, you know, internet. I see links, but in my daily life, nah. I'm telling you, the the world I left and the world I'm in now are two completely different worlds. Well, yeah, I can say the same for myself here. The world that I left out there, uh, you know, Denver and Vegas and, uh, <laughs> yeah, playing with the FBI in court. <laughs> Back home here, where <clears throat> I know wow. the sheriff. I mean, uh, I've worked with the guy, punched cows with him, and we built fence together. Hmm. Uh, drank beer. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, so uh, these guys, these auditors out there that, uh, you know, are uh, asinine to these cops, that there's, it's not making a good uh, connection. It's creating more division. <laughs> What did case, you expect? Well, I dealt with the cops out there that I encountered the same way I would here with, you know, a, a cer certain amount of subjection or, uh, that uh, puts him at ease, you know. Mm. You, uh, like if you uh, you uh, you got a knife and you're running down the alley and the cops don't need to stop you. Know, mm. Maybe shoot you in the leg like Shirk was talking about. That you were chasing your bacon, it ran away, and you wanted to get it back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was in that guy's pocket over there. He stole it from you, and you're just going to go get it back. Hey, knife. Anyway. Well, different different uh, practicability when you're making encounters. And if, we're, if we're fighting this governance, this beast, then uh, you got to realize the people that are on the left and so far on the right uh, against each other and trying to you know have a war, <clears throat> that's... That's the wrong, wrong way to go. So we're blaming each other when we're uh, neglecting to identify the nature of the beast. Well, you ain't going to tell me violence never solves anything, you big <laughs> pussy. What's hey, wrong with you, boy? I've, uh, that's perfect because I actually have uh, uh, a quote that goes with that. If I can... <laughs> of course it you do. <laughs> it, goes, it goes like this. It goes, uh, violence is not the answer. Violence is the question. Violence is the question. And the question and the answer. Let me try it again. Violence <laughs> Thank is you. Not the violence is not the answer. Violence is the question. And the answer is yes. Wow. That's the that's the quote of it. And I don't remember who said it, but I've got it written down in here. Well, I I'll guess add, I'm uh, just too old for all that shit. People don't even take me seriously no more, you know? I just don't need a walker or anything. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still, you know, walking around like, oh, here, I gave you an example. Today, my wife decides to be on time after work. That time yeah. that she's, she always says, I'll leave at three and then four or five comes. I'm leaving work now. And, uh. Here we go, and today she goes out of her way to tell me I'm going to be here at so-and-so time, and I, yeah, sure you are, and I went off in the backyard, and I got lost doing something I was busy doing, and I forgot all about Zerk, and I come into the house and went, uh-oh, <laughs> uh, there's messages on the computer, the phone's been called, and all this, and she's down in the train at the, it's the time she said, and I was figuring I'd have another hour, I didn't. Oh. Believe her. <laughs> yeah. So, to you know, to be halfway decent, uh, she was going to go get the dog something. So I meet, meet her with the dog. But I leave the house without my coat like a bonehead. Because <laughs> I'm out of sort. You know me. If I don't plan shit, I, I always forget something. <laughs> Today I forgot my jacket to go meet my wife. <laughs> wow. There you go. Big excitement. I'm telling you, man. If it gets any more exciting here in Freddy Town, I'm going to have to become a cop. I didn't think they had cops. They don't. I'd be their first one. Well, not the first one. Their first one recently, though. They get them. Like, they come through. 
I haven't even seen them come through. They've been working on them. <laughs> God, they've been doing plumbing on each individual house on both sides of the road. That is entailed digging up the street, then digging up into the yard to get these new pipes into wherever they got to go. So the whole road's been tore up for about three months now. They've been working in the cold and the heat and every whatever weather it is they're out there doing shit machines on digging and uh anyway so that might be slowing down the police traffic through this part of the city but i still when i go into town i never see any hmm. so eh, because they, they got one car that covers uh like 60 kilometers or something it's pretty bad there's no interest in police up this way. Now, maybe in Jutland, but not here. Or Copenhagen. But the rural? Nah, not so much. I guess it's like where you live in a way, just a little bit more crowded people-wise. But the that nice, easy, comfort, comfortable uh, country life goes along with, even with this hectic... You know, stop and go. Everybody's all inconvenienced in their cars. They got to wait for everybody to finish working and move their truck out of the way. It's really fucked up. But n there's not been any riots or uh, nothing. People have been just patient. <laughs> they put up with it. Yeah. What are you gonna do? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. That's well, they got shut down up there over the Toko Walk. Do? Some people are like, yeah, and others like, thanks a lot, you ruined our day. <laughs> people were stuck for hours in traffic. And that goes over like a fucking phone. Yeah, but five minutes here being tied up in your car is, is the same as being in the city and getting jacked for 20. Because it's so quick to get around here. It's small. But when you start tearing up entire roads, <laughs> it puts a little kink in the armor. But the society, I don't know, it's just more relaxed. The kids even wave at me when they're playing in that. They got this bike path and out uh, behind certain houses. People have a back gate to get out into it. And sometimes the kids, uh, they go outside and they play with chalk on the <laughs> on the. The bike path, it's made out of uh, blacktop. And the kids were playing out there the other day when I was going to the grocery. And they had badminton rackets and chalk. And they made up some kind of game or whatever. One kid was on roller skates. <laughs> it was it was funny. Just, But that's what I mean is and people here, they let their kids be kids and do shit. And they don't seem to have to have... Uh, Adult supervision, 24 hours a day, hold their hand, uh, the boogeyman might get them. You know, I was walking to school in Tulsa. I couldn't imagine, in the city, in Tulsa, couldn't imagine that uh, in these days. Oh, right, yeah. Well, I watched all that change, but yeah, I grew up when you did, well, a few years earlier. But same thing, you know, walking a quarter mile to school was normal. Yeah. Yeah, we because the the blocks of homes were huge, so yeah. There was a lot of little houses on those streets in those days. So yeah, we walked to school. I remember when we were old enough to ride our bikes. I think the school had an age limit on it, you know, for the safety of the kids. So for like my first two years of public school, I couldn't ride a bike to school because of the school, not because of my folks or me. <laughs> they didn't allow it. Can you imagine? I quit school right down in Louisiana. Yeah, they told me I couldn't smoke on campus. I couldn't leave at lunch. So I said, I guess I can. <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, I don't know. I didn't really have those kind of problems with school. I think the period of time when I was in that teenage years of school, the state hadn't got their greasy, grubby, dewy, gooey, state-mongering fingers on the school system yet. They were working on it, but they hadn't quite achieved it. And I got a lick sore. Ha, 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 ha. 
Well, I've got, I've searched this. Violence is not the answer. Violence is a question. Yes, is the answer in a different form. But I haven't got who, uh, I haven't found yet who uh, said it originally. I thought I had it already written down or typed down. Well, all I was making a point of joking about it because, you know, people go, well, violence never solved anything. Oh, yeah, real. You remember the Civil War, the Revolution, World War One, nine eleven? Violence solves a lot of people's problems. Just not the problems they're told they solve. They, they're lied to about that part. Yeah, I'm still looking for that. Uh, here's one from... Oh, I can stall for you. I will tell a story about... I've found another. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not finding who the author is. Oh. Whoa. Well, that's strange. You're pretty good with your research. and Hey, I even came a little bit of a ways. I can copy and paste a link while I'm doing radio now. I remember when that was way too much. I go, wait a minute. Uh, I end up shutting the show down trying to do this crap. But anyway, here we are. Yes, I am on. And Vinny's on a hunt looking for a quote. In the meantime, I'll just kick the shit out of him all over this boat. Oh, g -g 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 -g. Bluto. <laughs> Violence is, well, this is what Popeye might have said. or Olive oil might have said. Bluto probably would never say. Violence is not the answer is an oft-used expression. It's usually made in response to addresses of violent intent. Typically, it is also a subtle, subtle ac accusation of moral inferiority and an attempt to school the recipient in good, socially accepted modes of behavior. Uh, now, a Pocock might uh, insist that violence is the, uh, the answer. So, <laughs> so, this is a lesson in morality. Please be specific. What type of violence and what question does this type of violence have? <laughs> I'm sorry, Vince. Well, don't get me wrong. I'll, uh, no, I'll, I was uh, reading what Grimm uh, wrote. That's okay. why I was laughing. I'll go back and read it. Tell me, what does he say? Well, he, he butchered. I When Cirque brings me coffee or tea through the show, I always say I've got my elixir. <laughs> <laughs> and Grimm left the A out and said that doesn't sound good. <laughs> well, mm. I, no. I think I got here. Just caught me off guard. I don't know. Hold on. I might hit mute. I'll be back. There's buddies out here with a buggy. Uh, oh, okay. No problem. Right. Anyway, so, well, me and Vinny like parroting idiots anyway. It's like a hobby. You know, we call it quotes. Uh, this great smart guy once said this. Now look at me. I am saying what the great smart guy said. Ooh. Well, then you find out 50 years later that the guy that was so smart didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, what? I'm going to go for a buggy ride, dude. Maybe I don't blame you. Okay, well, will pop on out and you go do stuff all over Arkansas. Hey. I enjoyed the little ride along. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Well, we started this shit together, you weasel. Yeah. So. Go on. <laughs> Go. Be free. Be free. Yeah. Fly away. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to give uh, Vinny a new Indian name that he can work with on the internet chat room. He will, from this for time forward, in my mind, be known as the great Arkansas Indian warrior screaming butt cheeks <laughs> and it's because when he runs off his butt whistles and you could hear it for a quarter mile <laughs> anyway uh vinnie and his hit and runs but and i invited him uh, but yeah we started this here uh in a perfect world and i guess if there's any two people to be teamed up together to prove that this world is anything but perfect. It's me and Vinny. Day and night until you hit something like cholesterol or oh high blood pressure law police. The color blue. <clears throat> I mean we agree on a few points, but on the overall I don't know, it always seems to come out to where something that one of us says gets the other guy to interrupt because hey you made me think of this. <laughs> it's a, 
Ay, ay, ay. It's fun for me. I have a I have a giggle when I do the show with Vinny. Anyway, and back to the reality of the show tonight was about Dr. John Bergman. And this guy's like, uh, uh, who is that woman I found? I can never remember her name. Daniels. Dr. Daniels. And uh, she did, she did an ex like an exposure. She exposed the Rockefeller medicine for what it truly is. And lost her her ability to function as an American doctor. Had to escape the man and go live on foreign soil so that she could continue to be free in the world and not locked up for telling the truth about what these lying thieves are doing to us. And eh, probably this will come to an end someday too. I'll either get tired of doing it or get shut down or whatever happens to people eventually because um, it's like this autism thing does anybody notice that there's nobody in an old folks home suffering from autism <laughs> it strikes me as odd that this is such a crippling freaking disease wow but hey it only goes back in time so far interesting how did they do that well i found out by listening to dr john bergman that the cash cow in uh, in the hmm, what do you big pharma i couldn't even well i lost that whole damn title the cash cow in big pharma's got to do with dementia that's where the money's at so Wow, once you hit a certain age, and then they get you with something. Yeah, you need this replaced, or you need that part replaced. With me, it was my hernias exploded in my 40s. So that set the stage for, you know, more maintenance to make sure I didn't die. <laughs> anyway, and what I found out was being exposed to them through the hernias opened that doorway for them to keep me sick until the fucking day I croak. Now, I had other plans. I didn't know it. But I've told this and told this and told this. And there's other people on the reallibertymedia.com chat that I've spoken to that I know have use for this particular information because they too... Um, You've been convinced it's something it's not. And the, the way this Dr. John Bergman explains, for example, the blood pressure cuff, the test to check your blood pressure. You know that test's over 100 years old? And when he explains what they do, it shuts off the blood flow to your forearm from your shoulder. All right. But what, when they release the blood and it starts to flow back, there, that goes through your arteries, not your veins. And they're reversing the, the implication is on the opposite of what needs to be attended. And high blood pressure means your body's doing its job at that time to unclog your arteries. That's what high blood pressure truly is. Now... How they've managed to convince us that it's um, like the measles thing. Oh, the 300 kids get, got measles and one died. Yeah, the one that died got hit by a car. But the kid had measles when he got hit by the car. So we're going to tell you that that kid died because he had measles. What are you going to do? Argue about it? It was in the fucking newspaper for crying out loud. They don't lie. <laughs> they don't misrepresent. They, they tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, Elvis. I don't know what they do. But I do know that I'm not convinced. This is about my experience with the very thing that they've conned other people with. They conned me with, too. I got to the point where I went, hey, well, I need to know more. So I started looking. And if you're ill, or you're on some kind of 
medication and that medication doesn't make you feel comfortable when you take it you know what I'm talking about there's this empty feeling I would have in my stomach after I would take these damn blood pressure pills I remember it to this day it was very uncomfortable so whatever whatever snow job they did on me you know to uh, convince me that this illness I had required this potentially damaging maybe it'll work maybe it won't pill well it got me off my ass and into a computer to find out why and what I could do about it besides what I was doing about it and I've said it and I've said it and I know it's just a radio guy and a you know a voice that you can't physically see <laughs> but Cirque knows I don't take no damn pills. No, thank you. I think I took an aspirin a couple of years ago for the last time. Uh, she's, she would get a headache or something. Ah, go get me some of these headache tablets. And I go get her the headache tablets. And then I get a headache. And I, go, ah, I think I'll take a headache tablet too. And then I realized, wait a minute. What? What the hell? And now, I've just decided no... So, the older I get, I'm supposed to be getting more feeble and more broken down. And I, I don't get it, because I'm not. I'm feeling kind of good. <laughs> you know, like Keith said, I wasn't looking too good, but I was feeling real well. And that's me. Uh, the packaging is not holding up, but the, the inside doesn't know it. I don't think my brain knows that I'm a grown-up. <laughs> my brain still sometimes thinks it's a little mm, not ready for the adult world. Let's just say that. Whatever the adult world is, it's not attractive. You guys can have it. You schedules and your rules and all your damn regulations so that you can open a lemonade stand and make $25 Ooh, after you pay your taxes. Yeah. yeah, that's where we're at, right? I don't see that it would be any different with the sitting government where I sit. The difference is, I'm not here to do commerce. Being in, in Denmark had nothing to do with the financial decision. Had it, I would not pick this place as a place to base my f financial future on. <laughs> That that wouldn't work. It would. Uh, how how could I explain it? Well, I prefer to do things on the sly, you know, on the side, away from the government. Don't beg them for nothing. They don't ask you for nothing, and everybody goes home. Now they don't go home happy, but they go home. <laughs> they leave me alone. And uh, I guess if I decided to chase money, I wonder where I'd go. Hmm. I hear uh, there's going to be some real cheap property in Israel pretty soon. Go find me a little place in the Golan Heights. A little oil field, maybe. <laughs> Get me a nice turban so I could beat the heat because it's awful hot in the desert. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm screwing around. I don't think I would ever really seriously do anything of that. I think it would take a pretty fucked up mind to um, seriously take advantage of people for their personal gain. And yeah, then I think about what my parents did. You know, they bought a house in, uh, what, 1966 or something. Their very first purchase. They bought themselves a little house. And it didn't even cost them 20 grand. But when they sold the damn house, and I think they were in it until. 82, 81 or 82, so however many, 15, 16 years, whatever that was, and they sold the house for four times what they bought it for, hmm. and I still remember my dad saying, it ain't worth it, I don't know why these people are paying so much for this little house, it ain't worth it, blah, blah, blah. but he didn't, didn't stop him from taking it, <laughs> he took the money, and they, you know, they went somewhere else, but uh, for something to go up in price 
that drastically in 15 years is wow that is just incredible I wonder what the house would sell for now it'd probably be worth a quarter of a million dollars because ta you know just living overcrowded in the city now is like wow if people are pitching tents who knows what they're willing to do I'm not one of those people though I've got my limits with all this crap and uh oh uh, well what do you say mm. I'm gonna just have to um stand back and try to take a another look you know maybe with a, a fresh a fresh outlook at my homeland then I see things like what I read at the beginning of the show about what Trump's doing <laughs> what Trump's doing like Trump ain't doing anything but Obama before him he wouldn't do it oh Bush before him wouldn't do it Clinton wouldn't do it go back go back go back all the way to the beginning and not one of these presidents maybe Trump is the one that's not related to the royals there's got to be something more to this Trump than uh, we all know but He's this wild maverick in the White House, and hey, Beetle, ah, and uh, you know he's doing all these things, and no, he's not. Whoever's doing anything, it ain't nobody in a suit. It's always the grunts on the ground that get stuck doing all the shit work. I don't think Trump's gonna be over there knocking on the Palestinians' house door and saying, "Hey, you guys gotta go." Jews are coming, you gotta move, we'll pack it up. No, Trump's gonna be in Washington, D.C. with Nutty Yahoo, splitting a hooker and a bag of cocaine. Well, anyway, that's more likely than seeing Nutty Yahoo and uh, Trump knocking on your door in Palestine to tell you it's time to move on. Because the Jews want their home back. <laughs> they want their home Anybody out there in the real liberty media that believes the Jews are in the right in this land grab disguised as a Jewish war, a religious war, Jewish war. Wow, I'm so disgusted with the whole fucking thing. I can't even speak properly about it. But then again, this is, you know, in a perfect world. And in a perfect world, we're sometimes imperfect. <laughs> So we resort to doing things like making fun of the POTUS, making fun of the Jews, bad jokes, old stories about stuff that nobody could give two flying squats about. But I'm kind of hoping that somewhere, one, some, maybe somebody tonight that heard me pitching that link about the, the blood pressure and the cholesterol. You know, because that's just a, another way that I'm so disappointed in the reality that they teach us all this absolute bullshit. And, it, and eventually, if you look hard enough to find out what something is truly made from or out of or how it's made, you'll find out that it's not what they told you it was. Wait a minute. You mean... My brain needs animal fat so it can survive? Where do you get a notion like that? They're cutting down on all the fats across the board. And they're giving us a good price on the synthetics. Now, there you go. That. Oh my god. Aspirin is great stuff. That's Grimner. Grimner's being a sarcastic guy. I don't know what to call you at that one. Anyway, yeah, aspirin. I was listening to your show from last night. You know what I know. That This is like preaching to the choir here, folks. You know, I, I've just been doing it and doing it and doing it. How many times are you going to say the damn same thing before people go, Hey, I've heard that before. Where have I heard that? Oh, yeah, from you. <laughs> but I guess it's better than uh, pitching a president or maybe a... Uh, an insurance policy or some kind of new uh, fad that's kicking in. I think I might pitch movies, though. 
what would I like? If I was going to pitch a movie, what movie would I recommend for my peers out there in the electronic world to see? And there's not much, but I I did find, uh, I found this really dumb, uh, it's a show based in California. The guy, and I could never remember the girl that did it. I keep thinking she's somebody else, but the guy that plays the husband was Bullock in uh, Deadwood. And the girl is uh, Barrymore. And I can't never remember her name or... She looks like somebody else. I just keep confusing her with somebody else. Anyway, it's called uh, The Santa Clarita Diet. And I've seen three seasons of this ridiculous zombie killer mom realtor show. And I'll tell you, if you like a good giggle, because they play off of the... uh, being politically correct and everybody's got feelings and watch how you talk to them and watch what you say to her and in the in the backbone of the story is all about everybody's murdering everybody <laughs> and of course the usual suspects are involved the police the FBI and nobody figures anything out nobody gets caught and these uh, <laughs> these people just live murdering people for his wife to eat (laughs) it's just it's beyond ridiculous but it's funny as hell okay so i don't know how to explain that one any better than that but i guess vinnie threw me off dumping me again Eh, i was gonna be having intellectual debate with my partner vincenzo but (laughs) anyway well I'm going to go with proven a fake is easy. Now, it's easy to me, but it's not see, nah, it's not so easy for some other folks. It's I use Grim for example. Me and Grim can look at 9/11 and we go, "Yeah, Arabs did that from a cave in the Middle East." <laughs> That's how that happened. Of course, what was I thinking? (laughs) But, now, there's people out there in the real world, and like Mary would say, bless their heart, uh, they believe just what I just said. Some group of weirdos in the middle of nowhere managed to hijack planes and no, that nah, none of that stuff works. And the, like the story you were reading, Grim, about, isn't it a coincidence how every fucking time they have one of these damn mass shootings, there always is a police drill related to that actual act happening. Then, not only are they doing a drill on it, but these fucking guys are armed with live ammunition in an exercise training drill. And boy, were they lucky they did that day because that's the very day that the terrorists decided to strike and wipe out the church, kill everybody, and shoot the rest of them. Oh, man. Yeah, and we've seen this movie, what, how many fucking times are they going to play this one before people get... I guess it's never going to end. We're just stuck with it. It's like watch it's like coming on. Well, this might not be too uh pleasant, but it's like uh going into a chat room and walking into a sausage fest. You know, it's yeah, it's not everything for everybody. You know, some people like me I like a little diversity in my reading materials. I don't like to see the same two guys slobbering all over each other first thing when I wake up. But, because it happens, I do. And every once in a while, I get to make a crack about it on the radio. Eh, there you go. So, that'll be like complaint 4,000,006 that will be unheard by... The all-seeing, all-knowing master of time, space, and dimension. Nothing will happen. Nothing will change. Until I decide to 
change it. Hmm. What would I change? I don't think I'd change anything. I don't think I'm bluffing. Uh, the only thing I would want to do is put the responsibility back on the person begging for fucking somebody to do it. <laughs> Uh-oh, they're hashtagging on the RLM. I don't know what the best hashtag ever means, but... Okay. Hmm. Some kind of new secret talk that they use on the reallibertymedia.com. Oh, and I thought of this for a couple of weeks now. I would never, ever, ever say, throw me a few bucks for a pizza, blah, blah, blah. But I will say, if you guys do support the site and whatnot, and you feel a little bit generous, throw some money at the reallibertymedia.com. And we'll put it into the Sen Grimnir to Venezuela for a nice vacation fund. And I'm telling you, the money will be well spent by our good friend Grimner. Thank you. And <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? You know, because uh, it's just a matter of interpreting the information that you get. And I... I'm reminded, I got an old school story came to mind the other day. I don't know why I haven't thought about this. I can't think of how many years it's been since I thought about having been through this. But I was uh, 10 years old, I guess, in grade 4. Had this German teacher, and his name was Mr. Haddenberg. And the last half of the school year... He got this great idea. He decided he was going to offer all the kids in the class a different opportunity than everybody else. Each person was going to have a contract with the teacher to acquire a, fi a finished product. I will do this and then the reward for doing that because it was on a contract basis that was the point to break us into something for something and that was my first my first contract I ever uh, signed or ever was a party to <laughs> where I heard the truth about what was being done what was going to take place what was expected of me and if I would finish what I start, what I would get in return. And, wow, things have changed a little bit since I was 10 years old. Uh, for one, legalese, wow, that stuff's a little different than uh, what Heidenberg used. He didn't use that. And I remember when I called him that, he'd go, you put a mister in front of that, son. And I'd say, yeah, mister, I'm... <laughs> And then all the time, he was always yelling at me about something. But he did, I mean, he's holding a spot in my memory in life because he introduced me to the contract. What he didn't introduce me to was the Admiralty Court. That would have been a great help. But no, <laughs> public school. And yes, children, they had that Admiralty Court all the way back to the 1960s and beyond. But we weren't told that. I don't know how old I was before I found out the Admiralty Court actually existed. I'd been through the system a few times with petty problems over the years, and never, never once did it ever occur to me that there's a possibility that this guy that's sitting in the court in that big black robe calling himself a judge... He's not a judge, he's a magistrate. Not only is he not a judge, he might be claiming to be a judge. Did he legally and lawfully sign his oath to take office? Did you know out there in Radio Land that there are sitting judges to this day that have not gone through the formality of officially signing <laughs> their oath? <laughs> They took no oath of office. Wonder why? Could that be so they could do their sneaky, greasy, shitty Admiralty Court crap all over us? And do the shitty, greasy Admiralty Court dance all the way to the bank, counting their fucking stacks of money? No, because there ain't any money. They got 
computers just like us. They just put some more zeros to the end of that. Hey, you know what? That number doesn't have enough zeros. It needs four more zeros. There you go. Ah, now my net worth is really impressive. I must be important. People must look up to me and go, wow, I want to be just like you, you nasty, filthy, rich prick that doesn't give a shit about anybody else. <laughs> I know, why would I say such a horrible, terrible thing about people of wealth? Because, well, they do so much with their money to help the underprivileged. No, they create the underprivileged in order to have all that fucking money. But here we are all scrapping around because we're not in tune with reality and the truth at the same time. You either get one or you get the other, but it seems like both simultaneously is like... It's like seeing a unicorn while you know while you're walking home from the grocery store. It ain't gonna happen. But according to the opposition, you know, people who disagree with whatever it is that I don't believe is true, uh, they're the ones doing all the suffering. I think I'm not suffering. I've gotten beyond the suffering, and now I'm into waiting for the next shoe to fall. Right. But uh, I don't wait. It just, uh, how do you explain any of this? It's just day to day living is not definable. People don't know. Hmm. When somebody else tells me, yeah, well, I take shit as it comes. Okay. But I got to be at work at 4 30. Uh, no, you don't then. Wait a minute. <laughs> but, you know, because I can't anymore now because I'm married. I can't say I take things as they come, although I think I do. But like today, I missed the call because I didn't expect her to be on time. And the one time I don't expect her to be on time, she's on time. So the lesson learned is what? Don't expect anything from anybody. Just watch the clock. <laughs> And I can't do that. I don't know why. I'm so broken when it comes to, hey, I'll be there at 3 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> there is a single word or anything, says Karl Marx the bot. I don't know. Karl Marx the bot's a funny. Hey, Miss Kate's hanging around and chitter chatter and anti oh no anti quit we, we lost an anti but we gained a Karl Marx hmm. wonder what that's about anyway so I guess what I was trying to explain is uh, the individual outlook is so difficult to explain to somebody else because it's if it's an individual outlook, obviously, you're not going to run into very many people out there in individual land that share your individual thought. They just common sense would say, hey, I'm an individual and I think my own special way. Just like those fuckers over there with all the red hats. That's me. <laughs> See how individual I am and we don't even clash. We have red hats and red hearts <laughs> and flags <laughs> and we like the same football team <laughs> I guess in a perfect world that shit wouldn't mean a flying diddly hey wait a minute that shit don't mean a flying diddly now and we're in anything but a perfect world wonder what I asked one time and I think Grimner said the world is uh, amusing. He's like the Hannibal Lecter of the RLM. You know, it amuses Grimner. Well, I'd like to be amused by this stuff, but no, I'm not. I think I get a little pieced off, is what I get. Uh, hmm. Back to the, to the link about the cholesterol. Because to... Uh, it's just like explaining to a non-mechanical person that the red light on your dashboard means you're not 
you uh, you've been leaking oil and you're not giving it more oil, so your engine's gonna explode. <laughs> and well, can't you make the light go out? <laughs> not oil. <laughs> what? And that's what you hear. That's what I've heard more than once. Or uh, I've even heard stories. I've never seen it done, but I've heard stories about people putting the oil in the wrong in the wrong container on the block for might have been for brake fluid or might have been for something else, but it wasn't for oil, and they managed to put the oil in it and destroy shit. <laughs> Maybe it was just a story I heard. But once I did have a girl uh, put the jumper cables on my car wrong, my, took my car somewhere, and decided to give somebody a jump that had a dead battery in the parking lot with my car, and put the put the uh, the jumper cables on the wrong post, and <laughs> things went <laughs> went badly. <laughs> so then there was two cars that needed a jump. Well, one needed still needed a jump. The other one needed a battery. <laughs> so help, help, help. Whenever people help, I don't know. You should know what you're doing before you help somebody. I think that's probably why I'm so involved personally you know in this high blood pressure thing because it got the better of me for a long time and oh man just the the uncomfortability of being bound to this damn pill i still remember that in my head you know i didn't like them i didn't want to take them they didn't they didn't do anything that i was aware of until i stopped using them and then i went oh they were keeping me ill, so I'd keep going back to the doctor to find a cure to a problem that didn't exist. And how can you say high blood pressure doesn't exist? But do a little looking. It's it's more like a symptom of something else than a full blown disease, because it's something that we all. It's like a biological function that keeps your your arteries clean. That's why the pressure goes up, to run it faster, to get that sludge, whatever crap builds up in your arteries, move it along. Because your body, certain parts of your body replace their self. Like, some things replace in a day, some things replace in a month. I'm not real sure about all the times. I'll get to Mary and she probably has a list of all this stuff. Ah, uh, let's see, Grimner is making a crack at me. One day you'll get past pissed off Flash and you will be amused. This happens once you realize it's all a joke. What else could it be? Everything is so absurd. Well, okay. In the overall, you know, in the outside of my real physical daily life yeah in the outside world all that outside interference crap does amuse me but things like uh, convincing us that we need medicine when what we need is certain vegetables to balance whatever's wrong out and fix you because there's words you can't use without attracting alphabet soup agencies that are just stuck on punishing people for attempting to do something that's not going to hurt somebody else. And I told Goober, and me and Goober don't get along worth a shit because he won't listen, and he won't listen to this. And I'm going to tell him again. Build a little death ray. Draw something on a piece of paper. Make it look real. Go to the billionaires and tell them you need funding to make a death ray that will wipe out six million people. It sounds completely insane, but just a grant is not free money. They're going to want it back someday, you know, but they're going to give it to you first. What are you going to do? Sue you for your idea? <laughs> Who cares? I need five years and four million dollars and I'll give you a product that will blow your mind. And then, of course, in four years, you give them the same drawing that you showed up with. Hey, look, see, I did it. <laughs> then they can sue you all they want because you can get a judgment, but who's going to collect it? Spend all the money first. 
and then screw him like Trump does. That Trump, man, he's ooh, he's clever. Isn't he smart? Ah, he knows all the good words. And he knows all the really bad people and all the bad things that they do. <laughs> he's going to he's going to pick an old scab. He wants to fuck with Iran. And when you fuck with Iran, you fuck with Russia. They got some kind of bound like a uh, treaty or a, it's kind of binding. Hell, there's other countries that are, have been buddy buddy with other countries for years and years. Persia and France. Why do you think there's so many Muslims in France? Think the people wanted all that? I don't. I think the government. The government will do what the government want to do. And the rest of us just, I don't know, we sit here and shake our head. And wonder what the hell kind of drugs these people have been taking today. Uh, what was that new thing you were telling me today about? The, oh, never, well, she, my wife brought something up to me and it passed and then I lost it. Oh, yeah, I, my memory is so bad. But the things that go on here in, in Denmark, they're going to do some new tax. And I can't remember what it was. Oh, they want to double the retail price of tobacco in Denmark. So they're going to take it to the voting public and Tell them, hey, guess what? This is what we want to do. And I'm thinking that there's enough poor people, you know, that live month to month, poor people. Uh, that's the way I see poor people. That to double the price of something like that, no, not with the consent of the people. And I've said it a few times, when the politicians get too far out there in left field and it's something the that affects the locals, the people will go, hey, the government, back down, you're acting a little stupid again. And <laughs> they they didn't learn their lesson with the prisons when they uh, decided to allocate a certain amount of money per building, whatever improvements were to be made, a percentage of that had to go toward art. <laughs> so so the you know, so that the prisoners could see nice art while they're imprisoned. But, see, and I've been American so long, just the idea that, wait a minute, if you're going to prison, we're, they're supposed to treat you like shit and thing locked down and chains and all that crap and you can't move and you can't this and you can't that. And I live here for a while, and they go, hey, you know, the prisons here don't even have um, walls or guards or nothing out there. They're just out there. What? <laughs> People don't escape? <laughs> well, then you think about it. Where are you going to go? To get lost, you know, on the run in, in the modern day in a big city is impossible. Your face would be everywhere. <laughs> Everybody would be looking for you. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Now, 320 million to 6 million. And there's, I was saying before, there's 19 states in America that have a bigger population than the country I'm staying in right now. And wow, that's a lot of people. America has. But you know who's got more people than America? Damn near everybody else. And they're all going to meet in Venezuela. They're choosing sides. Well, nah, I think the sides were laid down. But I read today that even the Chinese and the Russians got their noses into Venezuela. And Trump said, back off. Ruskies and commies, we don't want you here. <laughs> and that's something. America is always the first one to kick the door in, go in where they're not wanted, not in, they're not invited. Nobody really wants them there, but they got all the pretty guns. And all those bodies and planes and aircraft carriers, tanks, and you know the routine. On and on and on. Endless fucking military budget. You know, because uh, all those people living in the street, 
but they don't matter. You know what matters? Walls and bridges, borders, governments, countries, oh, laws and statutes and codes, but human life is cheap, man. They're killing us all the time. I think it was medicine took the first place. Uh, hmm. More people die through the United States medical industry every year than actually die in car accidents now. They took the lead. Not sure what year they were talking about. Might have been this year. Might have been. Couldn't have been this whole year because we just got started. Must have been 18. But still, more people are a victim of the USA medical system than the car accidents on the road. You know, driving stupid, driving drunk. Oh, driving intoxicated on the devil's lettuce you know when you what happens when you drive stoned drive better that's what i think you're more aware don't want to get stopped so you're looking making sure the cops aren't anywhere <laughs> and you forget where you're going for a second then you remember where you're going and you look for some more cops but <laughs> the way things are going now i was reading something or listening to a link and I was dawns on me. I was making a joke to Cirque about it. Uh, I do that crazy voice stuff with her sometimes too and on these crazy ideas. And one of them was somewhere there's a cop and he's going to pull somebody over because, well, you know, they got that broken tail light. That broken tail light always works. And then he's going to go up to the door of the car and he's going to smell the devil's lettuce on the victim's breath and then he's going to insist on a test and they don't even have a test that's available to judge what high is this is all thc in your blood i wonder how many other ways there may be in the world to acquire the thc in your blood is it only through cannabis hmm. and even if it wasn't when was the last time the cops did some kind of test on somebody's sobriety or their whatever intoxication levels and they were correct? I mean, I remember the story about them arresting a 60-plus-year-old woman for possession of cocaine or speed or meth, meth or something like that. Anyway, turned out to be cotton candy, and it only took them three months to process this shit to find out what it was. So... Wow, they can just assume something is what they want it to be and clicky-clicky go the cuffs and then off to the jailhouse they go. And they don't care who you are anymore. It's really gotten out of hand. Well, not like it was ever not out of hand. It's just really, really out of hand now. So out of hand that I, I like living away from it. Now, there are those among us who find America a wonderful, happy place in which to live. And I think that's good. But we don't hear too much from people talking good about the states. Most of what we collectively see and read and hear is always all the bullshit, you know, the... The never-ending wars, the never-ending debt, the never-ending fuck you, we want everything you got. What, you got freedom left? Well, we'll take that too. Here, hold this. Ah, <laughs> uh, poor Grimner, he's out there and the wind is just starting to get going out in New Mexico. And I'm going to call that a night for in a perfect world and say thanks for all the <laughs> crazy people at the Real Liberty Media that hang in here with me to do this nut. And we'll do the lineup. I like to do the lineup. I don't know why. Tonight is Tuesday, so Wednesday and Friday at 7 on the East Coast, we got Graham Z and a Rocket Chair podcast. And in the middle, Thursday, I come back for 20% off because you never know when I want, might want to sell you something. That's at uh, 2 o'clock on the East Coast in the USA. And then Friday, Gramsci again. 
And then after that, at 11 o'clock on the East Coast, is Grimnir and Moose Girl doing the Freakers Ball. Then Saturday, I do the Dork Table, sometimes hostaged, sometimes unhostaged. We never know these things. Uh, that would be at 1, uh, 12, hmm. I think it's noon on the East Coast. I'm not sure. Ah, Vinny knows all that stuff. So, uh, I'm on Saturday. Anyway, Sunday morning, we wake up to the Blues, into the trivia game, follows that. And then at 3 o'clock, Hal Anthony comes on behind the woodshed and does a little common sense to the common man. Monday night, 7 o'clock on the East Coast, Grim Leftovers. The stuff that he didn't finish on the Freakers Ball he tries to catch up with on that Monday night show. And then next week, I'll try to do this crazy stuff one more time. Maybe we'll be with Vinny. Maybe we won't. We never know. And a big thanks to Grim and the gang at the RLM. All the bots and bodies that make this fun for me to do. And we're over and out.